every now and then a game comes along that helps to break the mold in a genre, where you have to incorporate a true mastery of the mechanics of the game to get a fulfilling experience. Death Store is a game that helps bring that about, but I wouldn't say it's revolutionary in the way it presents itself. Welcome in to Still Grizzly's channel. Today we're looking at Death's Door for our review, a top-down game that gives you the option to take control of death. What if you could bend the rules a little? What if death was part of an economy within the world? How would it all play out? Well, let's find out those answers and more on this review. I normally start with the environment, but I wanted to discuss the story first. You play as a crow who works as a reaper at the Reaping Commission headquarters. They're responsible for administrating the process of death. While performing your daily task, you find that there are several souls who refuse to die. You're dispatched to end their foul lives, as the previous crows had no such luck. This makes a simple premise. After you finish your first mission, which should be a routine assignment, you'll find an old crow who helps you put together the dots of what's actually happening. Souls are living past their expiration date. It's a deed most foul. Your 9 to 5 daily job is suddenly interrupted with a new quest to take down those giant souls. Within each realm you find new bad guys and ways to take down those enemies. There really isn't any talking in the game, as each scene with dialogue is presented in text. But don't let that worry you if you're not into reading, as each interaction leaves you with wanting a little bit more. Tack on a dry sense of humor from most of the villains and other co-workers and you'll be taking flight in no time. I felt that the game was able to split up moments of action with the story, making it more interesting as you progress. I really enjoyed the different perspectives of the side characters, and it helped to delve into that mortality of what you're doing as the death deliverer. Not really the best kind of to your door kind of service you want. This also helps you to understand why someone wants to maybe live past their expiration date, and it helps you explore others who may want their time alive to end. Moral greatness is the center point of the story which really helps to tie it together as you explore this world. The environment for Death's Door was what really kept me intrigued. I wanted to explore the colorful world and find out more about each area. In a semi-linear open world, you have to take that path ahead of you to unlock each area. On your way, you're going to find multiple enemies and eventually those giant souls you must acquire. While you move through those enemies, you'll open up more doors to specific areas. This helps with traveling the world, especially when you find yourself going back to a region. Each door opens to a new section in that world. After you've opened up that door, it'll take you back to the main area, and that way if you need to run home to upgrade, you'll find yourself getting back to those fights even quicker. Puzzles are placed all over the world, plentiful you could say, and you'll find yourself exploring areas, hitting a switch here and finding a gate over there. Each puzzle has a little bit of thinking outside the box, so you may need to go literally outside of an area, then drop in from above to get that reward. Death's Door helps incorporate that use of height, plus finding ways to move through areas you maybe hadn't thought of before. Because of this, the game provides a lot of mystery. There's several secret areas that you'll find on your journey. Maybe a pathway behind a wall that you just missed because you didn't explore every inch of this ruin. <laughs> Why yes, that did in fact happen to me. Why do you ask? Oh, was it the tone of my voice? <laughs> Don't let that take away from actually figuring it out, though, without a guide. Finding that secret pathway to a new weapon, or maybe a magic shrine, to give you a little bit of a power-up boost. I really wanted to look more into one more aspect of the environment that struck a chord with me though. While you explore this beautiful world, you can definitely see the David vs Goliath aspects. Your tiny crow facing down enemies three times larger. The music, that's what really ties it together. It gets your blood pumping as you dodge around an adversary. The soundtrack to this game is one I just wanted to put on and listen to, chill out, and relax at home. The music gives you a sort of calming effect, but also gives you an intensity without feeling like you're rushed, including a sort of playfulness at peaceful times, and then a more vigorous tone as you're in for the fight. This is just another awesome aspect that helps to invite you to want to play this game even more. 
We've looked at how the story has moral greatness while presenting a wise cracking dialogue. And then there's an immersive and open world that lets you explore every aspect with a beautiful soundtrack along with it. But what we really want to look at, that is the gameplay. I've mentioned before on other reviews, gameplay can make or break a game. If you've made it this far, then I know you're interested in finding out if you should play this. Just for the gameplay alone, I would say to move forward with getting it. I know, I need to stop telling you guys my final verdict so early. It really isn't a verdict yet, so why do I love the gameplay? Well, it's simple. That's it. It just worked. You can dodge and roll, then pop up to attack. Sometimes, though, you aren't so lucky and you find yourself stunned or slowed by an opponent's attack. Don't worry, though, as you'll learn this delicate dance of figuring out your playstyle versus the specific aggressiveness of each enemy type. As you move throughout the world, you'll find upgrades to your bird, and you'll see that as you end an enemy's life, they give you some souls. What this does is let you accumulate those souls to go back to the main world and upgrade a certain aspect of your crow's character. Want to be able to dodge faster? Well, you can. Spend those points to roll your way away from those bad guys. Want to make your swing with the sword actually do more damage? You can also upgrade your strength. These are just a few of the upgrades you get along the way. And you can also find new weapons hidden throughout the world. Once you find those, you may choose to use, say, the quicker daggers, or maybe resort to the handy dandy sword you start with. It's really all up to you. Why do all these upgrades? Well, the reason is simple. You're tracking down these giant souls, but it won't be easy. You'll need to upgrade and get better like in any platformer. I like that Death Store does this in a way that lets you find what works best for you. For example, you want to roll faster, or maybe you find yourself wanting to coast back and maybe shoot at someone. Then upgrade your arrows over, say, dodge. You can focus on perfecting one skill over another. Either way, you have the options to make your bird better. And if you find those boss fights too tough to handle, go back, farm some souls, go back to the main world, and upgrade your specific skills to give you that edge in combat. Health in the game is sparing, but don't worry, you'll get to plant seeds that later give you health when you need it. Throughout the map, there are little pots that you'll be able to place those seeds while you're out exploring. These will restore your health once fully planted. However, once you use that seed, it will not be usable until you reload that area. In turn, the enemy's health don't have a typical health bar, or random numbers coming off them when you fight. No, instead they incorporate cracks that start to glow when you fight an enemy. The more cracks, the more critical the enemy's health. This helps you to know how close you are without giving you exact figures with a health bar. I felt it was a unique inclusion that helped to provide immersion in the game. I feel I've waxed on and on about the multiple aspects of this game. As you can tell, I really did enjoy playing the game. That's why you're here though, to get my thoughts on the game and whether you should bite the bullet to get it. Before we answer that, I did want to talk about some of the negatives of the game. I know, I know, it sucks. But I can't give a review without looking at all aspects first. First aspect, when dealing with the environment, there were times that I was pleasantly surprised by thinking outside the box. However, sometimes those puzzles weren't easy to solve off the bat. Yes, Grizzly did the unthinkable and had to search how to get past a few of the puzzles. As long as you're okay with that, well, Let's move on to the next issue. Second, I found the boss fights enjoyable, but there was really no gauge to see if you were ready for a fight. While it was great to have those skills to level up, it's hard to know what you have works with each fight. The grind in order to level up, especially the final secret fight, was well in a word, woo! <laughs> I enjoyed Death Store, and as you can see, my complaints aren't one that would really deter someone from playing it. In fact, these really aren't super huge negatives in my opinion. Especially farming to get better in any RPG style game. This game is long, so if you decide to continue after acquiring all the souls for the secret true ending, which I say is totally worth trying. But let's hear my score. I give this game a 9 out of 10. I enjoyed this game. I loved the environment, the soundtrack, and the gameplay. The story was goofy at times, had me thinking about our own morality, and I love the wisecracks that they put in. 
If you guys want a game that is not only an escape, if you want a game just for a fun time, or if you just want to beat up some bad guys, then I can't recommend this game enough for you. It is definitely worth the price of admission. Hope you enjoyed my Death's Door review. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a like and a comment on what you liked about this video, or maybe you'd like me to check out some other games to review. If you'd like to help support the channel, make sure to click subscribe. This is The Still Grizzly, wishing you best of luck with all your future games.